Well, good morning. Uh, I'm CJ Hendricks. I'm with uh, OCHA and specifically with the Center for Humanitarian Data on the, the Humanitarian Data Exchange Project. Just to give me a bit of context, um, okay, the, the, good, the mic is working. Just to give me a bit of context, how many of you have ever used the Humanitarian Data Exchange, HDX, for data? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, cool. How many of you have ever used it to find the, uh, the HOT data that's there? It's the OSM data extracted by, by HOT. Fewer hands, but still lots of hands. That's great. That's great to know. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the center, just to, just to give you a bit of the, I don't know, the context about the other stuff we're doing other than HDX, but I won't spend too much time on that. But I think some of it could be of interest to some of you. So the, the center is part of OCHA. We have people scattered around in, in a lot of places, but the center itself is, is in The Hague. Uh, and I'm based in Geneva. So we started out actually just working on the humanitarian exchange language. How many people know what that is, the humanitarian exchange language? Oh, not bad, not bad, great. Uh, and also the platform itself, the data catalog, HDX. But then, you know, sort of very quickly we saw that if we were really going to have the impact we wanted to have with the use of humanitarian data, we had to address some other things. And so, so the, actually the work of the center has grown over, over time to encompass these things. And we've recently added predictive analytics as another, uh, another focus area as well. Um, I'm just going to mention this very briefly, but a, an increasingly big part of our work is around data responsibility and ethical use of data. Um, I'm definitely not an expert on that, but the, the team that's working on that is r some really, really sharp people, and they've developed a really great document that, that a lot of people are really engaging with, this draft guideline. Uh, so that's an interesting process if you're interested in that, uh, in that aspect of working with data. So HDX, our you know, tagline has always been making data easy to find and easy to use. We've done better on the find part than the use part, uh, for sure, but we, we keep uh, hacking away at that problem. This is a very old slide. We have a lot more data sets now. Um, so yeah, the, so here's a lot of kind of current numbers. We get around 50,000 unique visitors uh, a month, about 12,000 of whom download something. Um, we've got just over, just very recently, over 10,000 data sets from about 240 active organizations on the platform. And the sources they're pulling from total about 1,100. And about a third of the data sets have the, the Hexel tags, which make them a bit more interoperable. I'm not going to talk about Hexel very much, but I do have some Hexel postcards up here if you're interested to kind of see what this very lightweight data standard looks like. Also some stickers and some postcards and things. So what I'm going to talk about today is, is a collaboration we've done with, with HOT, and, and, and to be honest, HOT has done almost all the work on this, really. So, so it's really, it's really their, their success, I think. Um, so there's about 819 HOT data sets on HDX, so that's about you know, 8%. The math there is pretty easy to do. Um, and they're basically country-based extracts, usually. So it'll be a polygon around the country, it clips out that data, and it, it does, right now it does four. It does buildings, roads waterways, and points of interest. And it puts them on HDX as formats that humanitarian information managers really like. Shapefiles, there's some other stuff there, GeoPackage and GeoJSON, I think. But mainly it's the shapefiles that, that get used. Um, so that makes the, the OSM data really accessible to people in the formats that they're used to using on a, on a daily basis, and in a way that they can download and have, have local, which is still the way most people are operating in the field, at least among OCHA's IMOs. And what's really cool is we manage this through the, the export tool. It's, it's sort of basically an extension to the export tool that lets us define the region, define how often we want it to run, how often, well, which formats to export. And basically, that's all kind of bog standard and just is, is in there by default. The, the metadata is all packaged in there and all set up by default. We can tweak it if we want to for some, if there's some particular reason for a, a particular country. And it just updates on whatever frequency we set. Monthly is kind of our default for countries that are sort of just in a preparedness mode. And it goes all it to daily for, for places that are you know in an active crisis where there's a lot of mapping happening. So what that tool does is it runs that extraction and pushes that data to HDX. Now the data actually sits on on uh, HOTS servers. It actually on HDX we just point to the data, but but it gets updated you know on HDX with whatever frequency we we set in there. Now, the, in terms of usage of these data, you know, they're preparedness data sets. So, so a lot of them, this is Bahamas, and you can see it just kind of bumps along, getting even zero downloads, maybe one or two downloads here and there. A lot of them look like this. Afghanistan gets more, but still low numbers. But then something happens, 
like a hurricane, and suddenly we see that you know everyone's going and, and downloading those data sets. And we've seen that pattern over and over and over every time there's a, a big crisis somewhere. So uh, we've also seen the pattern that a lot of those downloads are in country, in the, in the affected country. Um, so we consider these a really important um, preparedness tool. Uh, it's kind of an investment in preparedness. Uh, Unlike other data sets on HDX, which you know are get constantly being used, like 3W type data uh, or, or IDP numbers and that sort of stuff. So it's kind of an investment in, in preparedness. Now, that is kind of my segue into, into the second topic I wanted to, to talk about, which is as the number of data sets on HDX has grown, it's gotten really hard to, to, to find the good stuff. And we hear this from our users all the time, you know. HDX is great, but I have a really hard time finding the data set that, that will answer my question, and, or even determining is the data set there or not? Does that data set exist or not? So we've been working over the last 18 months or so on this thing called the, here it's labeled data completeness. When we talk about it, we call it the data grid. It's just easier to say. Um, and what data grid does is it defines, uh, so just very briefly, I'll show you, if you expand it, there's an expand button over here. And if you expand it, you, you get this thing that I know you can't read, but it basically is showing you data sets that, that fit these various categories. So there are 26 categories there. I'm going to zoom in on just one of them, the affected people uh, theme, which has internally displaced persons, refugees, persons of concern, returnees, <clears throat> humanitarian profile locations, that's basically camps and such, casualties and missing persons. So each of those, whatever it is, there's six uh, items or, or categories, and we define a standard for that category. So for the IDP data, I forget the exact definition, but it has to be you know, subnational with a, a, a unique identifier for the location that ties to whatever geodata is available for specifying where the camps are, for example. So we have a, a kind of a formal, not completely watertight definition. We, we allow a little flexibility in there. It basically says for that data layer, here's what we expect to have. And so then we can evaluate whether or not we have that on HDX and, and, or whether we partially have it. So you can see up here at the top, we've got a data set that's fully compliant for internally displaced persons. It's this data set, and if you clicked on it, it would take you to that data set. Whereas for refugees and persons of concern, we have a data set that partially meets the requirements, but not fully. And it's close enough that we, we, we allow it to be on the data grid. So essentially, the data grid, this appears on country pages, in this case, Yemen. And it's this, this part here in red that I wanted to focus your attention on. Um, we have it for 14 countries right now, and it's only 14 because we have not invented the machine learning, you know, magic machine that does that curation for us. I mean, we have to go in and look at the data set to be sure the fields are there that we expect to be there, to be sure that all the admin units are represented, for example. Um, it's very tedious work, and we're doing it, you know, manually, uh, just with, with human effort. So we have 14 countries now. We're kind of looking at ways to make it easier to do uh, and to expand the pool of people who are helping us do it, uh, including working with, like, Map Action on, on uh, them starting to curate certain countries as well. So if any of you are in organizations that might be interested in doing that, I would love to talk to you about it. That's kind of where, where we're at. So if we look at all these categories, there is one for health and education. So the hot data that I talked about before appears in a couple of places here, before I talk about health and education. Um, it appears in the roads data, and I think, um, yeah, it's over here for the, for the roads, which you probably can't read, but that's the, the OSM data extract coming through the hot export tool. Um, and then it may appear in waterways. No, I don't, I don't think waterways is on here. We didn't define that as a core category. Um, but there's more stuff in there, and education facilities and health facilities are ones that are almost always missing. So what we're trying to do right now, this project is actually underway right now, um, I'm not sure if Mary's in the room, she's the, the project manager on it, um, is to, to split that data out. To, to, so we have a points of interest data set right now, but we want to take out the health facilities, take out the education facilities as separate data sets, and then that will fulfill the, the data grid requirements for, for, for those. So that will, that will help fill that in. Um, so uh, all total, there are 26 of these core categories. Um, as of June 30th, we assess this every quarter. So as of June 30th, 18% um, of the categories were complete. 
34% were incomplete, which means that we have something, just not a fully compliant data set, which means about 48% of all, all those categories across all 14 countries are, we just don't have the data. So we're still a very long way from being sort of data ready, even in countries that are, that are in crisis. Um, and this is my last slide, so I think I'm doing okay on, on time. Um, yeah. So, and so we can spend some time on this if, if you want, but basically what we've noticed is that completeness tends to be high for those themes where there's like a, a generally recognized authority. So like, for example, WFP, you know, does a food prices monitoring, has a food prices monitoring program in like 80 countries. And so that data sets out there, it's subnational, so it meets the requirements, it's you know, frequently updated, they're, they're constantly monitoring food prices. So that data set's there. Uh, IDP and refugee data, typically either IOM or UNHCR are responsible for that, and so typically that data is, is there and present. 3W data, OCH is responsible for that, so typically that data is there. Where completeness is low is where the responsibility is a little bit less defined or, or is more diffuse, like it's something that would more likely lie with a national government or something like that. So things like affected areas or education facilities, as I mentioned before, uh, or transportation status, those things tend to be empty. And it's, I think, you know, because there's just not necessarily a recognized quote unquote authority uh, who sort of feels responsible for making sure that data is there. Um, and I think that's... That's all. Are there any uh, any questions about that? I'm happy to talk about any aspects of that, or anything about HGX you want to complain about. I'd be happy to happy to hear it. Yes, please. Oh, oh, sorry. Wait, wait for the mic. Sorry. <laughs> this is where Sven gets his exercise. He's... Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I have a question regarding the dates. So, is a data set being considered? Um, not complete if it's out of date and you know, let's say after two years or yeah. I it's probably even less than that. Um, will you downgrade them? Then? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's actually the one piece that is sort of automated. We have a we have a freshness component on HDX that monitors how often data sets are being updated. It actually hashes the data sets if they're remote, so we can actually see if they're changing. Um, and so if they get beyond. So there's an expected update frequency that users tell us when they contribute the data set. And if it gets too far beyond, and there is a little bit of a leeway, but if it gets too far beyond its update, expected update date, uh, then, then eventually it would get cycled off or flagged as, as incomplete. I forget exactly what, what's the break point um, for that. But yeah, 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 freshness is a really cr critical issue. And one that's a little bit easier to automate. It's the other stuff that's almost impossible to automate. Other questions? Hi. Hey, CJ, thanks. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you guys define completeness? Um, it's something we, w within OSM, it's really hard to define, I think. There's multiple levels of completeness. Yeah. And um, we often think about good enough as well. So right. Like, what do you, how do you, any, any thoughts on that topic? Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm definitely a proponent of, you know, something is better than nothing, good enough data, because that's, you know, from, from, from working in the field, you know that that's just how the world operates. Um, so that's why we have this concept of, let me just back up a little bit, of this, these, the, you know, the, the blue, solid blue box versus the hashed blue box, complete versus incomplete. So we can let something go into the data grid, even though it may not fully be there. Either it doesn't cover the whole country or, uh, or you know, it doesn't have all the attributes we expect. Food security is a, a particularly, you know, complex domain. So if something's got part of that, but not all of it. We definitely want to include that. So that gives us some wiggle room uh, in, in terms of that. So th there are like seven criteria for completeness, and I, off the top of my head, can't really remember them all. It's sort of a, there's sort of a, like a decision tree that we go through to evaluate the data sets. And some of them are kind of obvious, like, you know, you expect it to ha be like, let me, let me just show you one. Let me switch to a browser here. Um, and maybe I can make that a little bit bigger. Oh, this is a German keyboard. Help, somebody. <laughs> I'm looking to make it bigger. Control plus. That's control. Where's plus? There. Oh, no. Maybe it doesn't work like that. So somewhere in the tools here, I can probably zoom. Can you guys read it OK like that, maybe? I don't know how to zoom in. I just want to. I just want to zoom the browser. Oh, here it is. I see it. Now. I see it here now. Sorry, I just didn't see it there before. Here we go. All right. 
Um, so if we, uh, if we hover on one, I'll just do, um, we'll just go into food security. Actually, we'll go over here. So, um, so for example, if you hover on it, you see the definition and you see, sorry, you, you see, if you hover on the, the item itself, you see the definition. So returnees is defined as tabular data, the number of displaced people who have returned. Um, that should have another, uh, someone may have edited that, one of the curators may have uh, edited that, that should mention that it you know, needs to be by, by a subnational admin unit. Um, so some of these get really complex, like humanitarian profile locations, Here it mentions like specifically by a subnational administrative boundary. So each one is kind of, so the, I mean, that's the definition we use. And that's not, like I said, it's not watertight. We need to have a bit of wiggle room in there, but we're trying to be specific enough that, like, like if you just search by tags and search food security, there's data sets that will come up that will be like, you know, primary food source for like one village in Uganda. And that may be really useful data to some people, but it doesn't meet our preparedness requirements there. And so, so we don't want to let that in. So the definitions kind of help us do that. But yeah, completeness is, is not easy. And the one that's hardest, the hardest aspect of that is, um, is the data exhaustive or not? So for things like admin units, you can pretty well say like either all the admin units are there or they're, or they're not. That's pretty easy. But for things like education facilities, who can even say how many there are in, in any country for that matter? So it's hard to say if it's exhaustive or not. I think it's tricky. One more question in the, in the back, Chad. Hey, CJ. What um, steps, if any, do you all take to ensure that the subnational survey data that's collected matches the boundaries that are available on HDX? Yeah. I mean, we can't take any steps, right? People upload the data they have, and they've used whatever boundaries they have used. What we try to do as OCHA, not specifically HDX, is, is, is you know, promote, com promote the common operational data set for admin boundaries, which is this process by which uh, a specific set of admin boundaries is, is assessed by people working in the country as being the best available, and it gets kind of anointed with the, the COD, uh, the COD brand, uh, and it goes through a bit, a bit of extra validation uh, and, and data quality control, and then we hope and pray that everyone uses that, because if they don't, it becomes, as you know, as you well know, very, very difficult to merge those. So, um, but it was, we wouldn't stop someone from sharing data just because they've used the last year's version of the admin boundaries. Um, but yeah, so we don't actively do that other than promoting the CODs from the start. Hey, Luke. Oh, sorry, you said one more. Yeah, no. Yeah, sorry, I don't want to use up too much time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.